The in-local program is for recent graduates in the built environment fields such as architecture, construction management, uh, carpentry, civil engineering, just to name a few. And it's a really intensive but exciting program. You get to be part of a project from conception all the way to completion and you switch roles and you get to learn different kinds of things in different types of things times and you really grow as an individual and as a professional and without any further ado um, let me just introduce Luca Astori he is an architect all the way from Italy and he's worked with OMA Ram Colas from 2006 to 2008 yes and he's also worked with numerous NGOs in Kenya and Brazil and in Egypt as well and he is also uh, the partner and the co-founder of the in-local program here in Lesotho. And he's going to be speaking on architecture as a collaborative process. And Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. That's a, thanks everyone uh, to host this lecture again. It's really a pleasure to be here again with you. Since we're a bit late, I tried to go to start. So. I want to talk about architecture as a collaborative process. As you can see, we already, part of the lecture was like, try to put up, set up the, the screen as a collaborative work. So thanks to the team. Um, what I would like, why every time I came here, I mean, I tried to find something uh, into the project that I'd done with my office and other offices, as Nicolò here, um, to kind of expire, but also to um, to find a link with what we are doing here. We are working as a team right now in, uh, after our fossil for doing a project for IDAL. And you know, sometimes it's difficult to dealing with people, to work with other person, to involve, engage uh, the clients, the community, the consultant. Of course, it's easier many times to work. It's easier to work alone, but that doesn't mean that it's actually you actually go really far, or the project in the end is gonna be a real success. So I'm gonna show three projects uh, that uh, I, my office in Milan, uh, Aum, did with others. So we were invited for doing a project, we did a competition, but we always try to collaborate with others. So in this case, it's an educational farm in Azerbaijan that we did with, we need to collaborate, we involve with, uh, PN Landscape, that is a, an agronomist, and also Petro Geo, that is the geologist. Why this is the, the site? So it's a land in, um, in Azerbaijan, as you can see here. So in the south, at the border with Iran, it's called Lankaran, and it's a really beautiful place. Used to be the climate in Azerbaijan, it's like a kind of um, Mediterranean climate, so it's really similar to Italy. Um, they used to have the 50% of the country of Azerbaijan used as agricultural land, but they lost a lot of uh, type of uh, um, vegetable. A lot of production was reduced during the uh, Soviet occupation. For example, they have winery, uh, wine yards, they do uh, more crops, r a lot of rices, tea for example, but during the Soviet period of course Soviet like Russian doesn't drink wine, they drink vodka, so they uh, change the, um, the landscape and they change the production from wine, to, so from grapes to potatoes for example, and they destroy a lot of the land. So here's the site, is around 8500 hectares of, of uh, landscape. We didn't have any maps, we didn't have any drawings. The, the owners come to us and said, well, I have this, I want to do something special for the country. I want to do a, a, a project that is going to be um, a milestone for all the region, but also for the others to involve, also to be an example to all the other farmers to start a new uh, production of food, more relate not to intensive and massive, but more to organic. So they call us, us to doing the, the master plan, this is how the weather change. 
So it's really similar also to here, like in, in winter, I mean, our winter, so January, it's snowing a lot, and then they have hot uh, and wet um, summer. And of course, like, there's a lot of issues when you do a farm, and if you want to do an organic farm, you cannot say, I want thousands of cow, thousands of hectare of corpse, many animals, but you need to balance. So when he said, I want to do something special, we were into research of what is, means organic farming, what it means, so we start studying permacultural. Uh, permaculture, it's a really complex word, it's even beyond organic. That means that instead of organic, usually you cultivate a plant and you don't use any chemical, any fertilizing, you're just going like with natural um, elements, but basically you look at the plant or at your field. In permaculture, the main concept is that it's a holistic approach, so you don't watch, you don't look at the plant, but actually you look at the entire environment. So if you want a cow, you also need that kind of flower. If you need the flower, you need that kind of bees, and so on, everything is related. And of course this is, as an architect, we had to study a lot, but also we had to involve other people. That's why we involve the um, agricultural engineer and the agronomist because they knew better than us. But of course, what would, would, be in, uh, would have been impossible to design all this project without that people. That of course, in, there was a kind of sometimes friction during the process because of course, what they want, they, what they imagine that all the landscape beautiful without any architecture, without any infrastructure, but of course, there is also the request and the needs of the client. So you need to balance everything. You know, you know, we want a straight road, and they say no, straight road is not okay. It's better to do in curving. So you need to find a balance. But in the end, after a one year, six months of research, six months of a project, after one year, we uh, made a huge, um, a massive project. And that you can see here, invasive technique in addition to deep ploughing, elimination of natural vegetation and dense grazing have triggered erosion and accentuated slope instability. So everything that was done before, that was not of course organic, but really intensive agriculture, destroy the landscape. So we try uh, to work with the nature, work with the engineer to make the project to rebalance all the sides. So this is the, um, the entire map. What we did the first was also mapping. Mapping was really important. That's also why we involved the geologist to actually make a, a huge surveys on the area to map, but also to understand which kind of soil we had. And we discovered that actually what was the hill, actually he said this so um, this layer of soil usually is like 50 meters below the real surface. So it means that during the Soviet, actually they put it down, they uh, literally demolish, I don't know how to say, like remove part of the hill. I don't know for which reason, probably to make it more flat for agriculture, but actually they ruin the nature and the environment around. So we did this huge map with the, uh, uh, with the permacultural concept, it's quite complex system, so you have the five zones. So you divide the area in five zones. One is the, the central area, is the one where the people live. So it's the core, the heart of the system. Then you have the other zone is circular, so we have the first one where there's the main house, the orchard, and the pets or the animal that they are, you can keep it next to the house. Then you have the second zone, there is where you have the cutter, like cows, or sheep, or whatever. And then you have a third zone where you have um, a kind of agriculture. The fourth zone is where you actually use for the cattle. And the fifth zone is the wilderness. So you don't touch the system because you need all of them together. So we redraw that we did the mapping. So as you can see here is the um, zone one. So there's the main house uh, with the orchard and so on. There's just an image. Of course, we, we look into the vernacular architecture 
So they have a really steep roof, but they also have all this. In agriculture, um, architecture is what is beautiful when you go in the countryside, that usually the house is like, you start with a nuclear, with a one nuclear, um, one unit, and then of course the family grows, so you add another house, then you add the kitchen, then external kitchen, then your grandson comes home, you add another stuff. So we try to integrate this adding since the beginning of the design. You can see here starting of the modeling and so on. But also like, since it was an educational uh, farm, we decide with the client what we can do. If it's an educational farm, that means that you need to bring people to training or to show them. So we also design a farm a guest house, a kind of module that can be used as a, let's say, um, like a lodge but also has a wine or actually tea taste, but it can also be used as a training um, complex. So we designed this small module that is come from a, like a local house that they have this um, really tall roof. We designed, it's a kind of three, three layers, so three stores. So you have the, the ground floor that can be used as a Let's say if it's a, um, a tea taste, can be used to show the different kind of tea they produce. Then you can go up, but you can also see, so you can go and drink and you can see the, the, um, the landscape and so on and so on. So then, as I said, there's intensive agriculture in the zone two. And again, other example, how to put the trees. Here's some image of this kind of zone where you always need to balance the wildness and, um, and, the, uh, and the part that is cultivated. So in the zone three, we have the rices area. So you can see because also where to put the, the, the rice field. Of course, in the lowest part of the valley, because the water anyway, you can collect the water easily instead of have the rice on top. All these things, of course, came to the all this information came to the relationship with the engineer, agriculture engineer, and with the geologist. Otherwise, we might have be put the rice in the wrong position. Even if we are super smart architect, anyway, there are things that we don't know, right? So here again, working with them, how you prevent like if it's an holistic approach. So we you need to keep the animal inside your land, not to kick them out. So what we do is introduce what we call like green fingers. So basically we replant part of the forest along the edge of the different zones so they can be corridors for the animals. If you have a desert, let's say not a desert, if you have an, an intensive agricultural piece of land, the animal cannot go from one point to another one. They can, but of course they need to cross your farm, so you shoot them. Someone else will kill them. They need to cross the road, so someone, you know, go take over. So what you could do, you do natural corridors. When the animal, they are smarter than us, instead of walking here, they go through the corridor to cross your land. And this also brings more biodiversity. A land without biodiversity, it's a dry land. And also, of course, like we keep the, the wildness. So in between, we create a larger part of place that we didn't touch. Or actually, we increment this part of the trees and the forest. Here is all the forest. It's a park, natural park, that of course was destroyed during the Soviet. And we try to recreate this natural corridor and also use the trees as a brink, as a windbreaker, because there's always a, a wind coming from the same direction that of course is not good neither for the human beings but also for agriculture and that's why we study this kind of um, greed to plant the trees that of course that we discuss with the, um, with the um, uh, agricultural engineer it was a huge huge process long process many discussions Many fight, of course, because maybe the wind trees was passing exactly where we want to put the house. 
and the engineer and geologist they'll say well that's not the best post even if it was the best view so we need to shift the house but in the end the old process as a holistic approach again it works really well because we know now that everything is in the right place because it was a, a huge uh, work as you can see here for this project we work like around in a year around 20 person many architects engineer civil engineer agriculture engineer all together and as we state we all know that our work, our work is humble but the, the union of our humble works is extraordinary so if everyone works together they can even achieve a better project this one is uh, another project in a do completely different environment this is a school in Malawi it's actually the site is this site here it's a competition we we won the third prize that I did uh, with another architect another office that uh, we both work uh, in many projects here in the continent in the region he also work a lot with um, uh, Francis Keret, that is an architect from Burkina Faso, you might know him. So we work together, and of course, like when you put two architects, two two offices together, there's always a problem of who's gonna lead the design, who's gonna, who is right, who is wrong, what you like or what I wrong or don't like. So you need to be kind of step back sometimes and let the others lead or open the discussion. I don't see, I really like to fight, let's say. I like uh, conflict, because out of conflict, if of course it's, uh, you set up the discussion for be more creative, to be, to structure and to build something new. It's, an, it's a good fight. I mean, it depends what you fight for, but. Um, so, but sometimes I also, many times I step back and say, okay, he likes square, let's do a square. He likes a circle, let's do a circle. But you open, you keep opening, like you stretch the limit of a design around you to, find, to try to find the best uh, design. So we work, well, we, we did the, when you do competition, you do competition in really short time. Also, you usually you do by night. So I was doing this competition, meanwhile we were doing another competition by day. So we did only by night for kind of three weeks, but we spent a lot of time of discussing. This is like, I don't know, maybe the 30s or 40s um, options that in the end was the one that after many discussion and fight, we came across. The idea was like, the request of, uh, for the competition was kind of crazy because they asked for phasing they want a, a, a compound for 300 students each and each phase, three phases for 100, 100, 100 students but they want the house for the professor immediately that doesn't make sense because you have all the professors but you don't have all the students so it was a kind of strange but let's say okay fine so we try to also, since we work a lot in Africa, there's lack of resources, there was not a lot of money, and they have laterite. I don't know, maybe here in the region you don't have, but in many parts of Africa, Mali, uh, Kenya, uh, Burkina Faso, Malawi, and um, Mozambique, you have the laterite. It's basically a stone that you can carve, you can uh, take out from the quarry. So we study a module that can work for many purposes. So as a classroom, but can work also as an office, as a lab. So by studying one model, of course, you don't have a lot of time, but also if you need to build in phase and think that you start the first, but then other people we took over the project, they need to replicate the project many times, it's better to study one technique, one module, than the people they can do after by themselves. And of course we study, they ask, it's an agricultural universe for fields, they ask for animals, but they ask for stud, uh, of, um, professor house, student house. The land in the end seems a huge plot, but in the end there was not so much space. So 
what we decided in any work with court, so even if you start with phase one, then it will not look unfinished. So you have the entrance, you have the offices and the professor house, and you have the first phase one. Then if it's not, if it's not finished, and of course you have one set of four student houses, if they don't go for the other phases, at least every unit works together. They work alone as independent object, but they also work together. And each unit has a courtyard for doing a small vegetable garden for the professor, for the student, but also they have, if they don't build the other infrastructure, facilities, they can use all the rest for gardening. So as you can see here, there was like the idea to phase one, so th the unit for sleeping, some, of s some schools, rooms, the, the, the library, that of course the library also, we put the library close to the, the roads, so it can be used by everyone. And then each court also, there was the topic of collecting the water, water harvesting, wind, vegetable garden. I mean, it was a really complex, uh, topic because when you do such an investment you need to think how to preserve water how to preserve the land or actually also use the land in a more uh, intelligent way so that's the idea that in any unit this is the classroom unit you can have a space a courtyard protect by the wind where you when the students can also exercise training to doing the um, uh, the gardening and doing to farm. So that's the structure, that's the module. You have the walls, the walls then you have kind of a ceiling done with the vaults and then on top you have a metal structure and then the metal roof but also we provide shade and seat in um, exteriors. All this information came joining an engineer that also helped us with the environmental and the, the, the sun. As you can see here, there's like a, a small concrete, just a concrete um, foundation, but then again with laterite, then you have wind crossing ventilation. The roof is detached from the real ceiling so that it can be a ventilation between the metal sheet roof and the ceiling. So that's also keep the air circulating. And of course, like every unit has a, a roof that brings the water inside. Okay, can you, you can you reuse or actually use for, um, for farming. So here again, as you can see the unit, every unit there is a corridor outside, there is a seat and the shade relate to the, of course, to the, 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 um, the travel of the sun. There's a play in the place in between the, the units where the kids can also play. And this is the unit where you can see the, the prefabricated um, ceiling. Also, everything was kind of idea to prefabricate everything is the same that when you learn a technique, then you can keep doing and doing and doing for many other projects. Of course, thanks to Nicolò that did the render. It's a beautiful image, I would say. Also, this thing, sometimes like, you know, you, you collaborate with others. So, I collaborate a lot with the uh, office of uh, Nicolò that I will show you the last project. And they are really good in images and representation among other thousands of things they are good of. So sometimes they help us to uh, doing also the images. And each, and here is the last project that is also a competition that I will share the presentation with Nicolò, where we work together. Actually, he was invited to doing, you know, also the things to be humble. Humble, it's a good thing. You need to be strong and I mean, fight when you need, but you also need to be humble to understand when you can do things to, alone or actually when you need others. So his client was inviting him to doing a resort in Italy, a huge area. It's uh, 35 hectares, but not that big, but anyway, kind of a size that complex, uh, give a kind of complexity. And he was humble enough to invite us to doing with them the project and in uh, a huge 
structural engineer office because the project was massive because they asked more than 10,000 um, square meters to be built. So it's like resort, it's like Marinella Resort. So you see the office, ACQ is uh, the office of Nicolò. Uh, AEI is the, prod, is the engineer office and AUM is my office, so we did this project together. So the resort was like, it's in an island, it's in Sardinia, and it's situated here, so this is the site, 35 hectares that right now are abandoned, there's nothing. And the client asked for a project that they asked for hotels, boutique hotels, sport facilities, restaurants, villas, and so on, and, but also like to implement the landscape. It was a competition, so we worked together. There was a like, moment of, not friction, but anyway, where, again, as I said, everybody, we are both architects, so you need to decide who's doing what. You need also to trust the others, but also able to challenge in the good way when something doesn't sound correct. So we did, my office did the master plan and the landscape, and his office did the part of architecture and interior for the village. But of course, there was always um, an exchange of values, exchange of uh, ideas, exchange of concepts, because in the end, we trust each other, and we know that sometimes if I do something wrong, he can say, hey, Luca, I don't think that maybe in the other way it works better. So he was, here is the site. We have, um, um, on the south, we have a boundary for the, with, the, with the train. So the, also there's a problem because you, want, you do a resort, and of course the client doesn't, the people, the tourist doesn't want to see the, the train station and all the trains. So we have to create a buffer zone here to protect the site from the train. And then we design, we, we, uh, sorry, we split, we organize the site in three different areas. One, the first one is the, the facilities where you enter. And then, uh, so you have the restaurant, everything that is more related with the public, so it's semi-private. Then you have the hotels and the villas. And then you have the last part that is the most natural, a part that also we didn't touch that much. The idea was like not to change the landscape because the landscape as the view is wonderful, but actually to foster the existing landscape as it was. And also when you do this, when you do any kind of this project, a house from a really small space to a bigger one, you need to think about the, um, the access and the flux of the people. If you have the tourist, then you have the staff then there's need someone else, someone else to come and clean, and then there are also leisure. You cannot make the same path to, for everyone, otherwise they cross every time. So we thought there would be a nice idea to have a different access and different uh, roads for the different users. So here is the first uh, the entrance, what we call entrance clusters, where we have all the facilities that are not related to accommodation, but for the people that live, that's gonna rent the house there. So here is the second part, the central part with the villas, that uh, Nicolai will explain later. And here, of course, the landscape, it's more artificial, it's more design, it's more, it, we call hardscapes. And of course, from here, from the villas, where there are the, view, the beautiful view toward the sea, here is where we decide to not change too much the landscape, but leave it and foster the natural and the indigenous plants. So here again, of course, we, there was a big issue of privacy because when you have many huge villas and people that come and want a kind of a privacy, we also use the landscape to kind to protect the views, protect the rooms and so on. Other images? I'm sorry, it's a bit scattered uh, images, pixelated, but anyway, this is what we call the loop. So we try to reuse all the trays, the existing trays that we found on site, and to connect them with this loop, 
that is a, a, what we call it like a, a leisure trade. So the people can use those parts that it, there is no, there's no volumes, there's no construction, just for pleasure. It's like to walk here up on the highlands with your beautiful hills. You just walk around. What we did is like we create along the loop some moments, few moments where the people can stop and do activities. Because sometimes, you know, with tourism, you need to, to bring this to the tourists, but also to keep it them. So you need to give them some activities. So here is like the yoga center. Here there's a, a space with just vegetable, we can, uh, sorry, trees, and uh, where you can sit, wait, read, relax. Here there's a small food garden next to a bar or like a kiosk where can, they can have a kind of drinks or something to eat during the day. There's also Belvedere where is, you can see all the sites. Here again the wellness spot. So here there are many people that like to run. So since the, the site was a kind of compact and all this part is built with accommodation and hotels, we decide to use why we don't use this loop and mark the road with color so the people know how many kilometers they they run around. And here the concept for the villa that I leave it to Nicola to explain. Thank you so much, I'm very glad to be here. Um, the concept is like, uh, you know, your first step, the first step that you did when you are thinking about the project. The interesting, uh, interesting thing in this kind of project that we don't, we didn't make the concept of the villa uh, after, but we did uh, the concept of the villa before. Uh, you have to trust me, work with Luca is not hard, it's very hard, because he's very humble, but in the same time, he's very tough. So it's struggle all the time. So we have this kind of familiar approach to the project, and uh, this is the reason why I love to work with him and love to work with other um, people. I mean, like architects or engineer, or uh, whatever. This is, this, this is the reason why I'm, I, we, we would like to speak also about the concept of the villa, because it's like, it's not only a building, it's a system that is a built with the landscape in this case. So here we ha we ha you have two images, uh, these are related to the land, so the concept is very linked and related to what we have just nearby. Uh, this is a, a cork tree, and so the idea, we have uh, at least two big problems of the area. I mean, the seaside was on, it was on, uh, face on the north side, um, on the north, so we have some problems just to organize the system of the villas, the interior design. This is a mood board, is like what kind of materials we used just to do the concept. And this is Sorry, just a, the north in our hemisphere yes, it means no sun, shade and cold. So usually when you go to the sea you want to face the south, that is your north, to have the sun, enjoy the view, etc. So it's flipped from here. So the north side for us was a bad side because you have the sun on the back, mm -hmm. so you're facing nothing. Okay? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a good deal. Um, this is the first image, but we will be back to, to that. Uh, the idea, so relating to this kind of situation, the geographical situation, was to find the correct solution uh, just to bring light into the design and the villas. Um, you know, we, we work as architects, but we need to work with um, uh, passion and with attention of uh, the building that was already built by our culture. So we need um, some sort of, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, how can I say? Uh, yes, vernacular architecture. So the idea was to build a house with patios and courtyards. We started, we, we had more or less um, four typologies of square meters, so the idea was to, to cut a little bit the building and to bring light even in the north part and the south part of the, of the building. The other thing was that 
we the, the um, we don't have a lot of slopes on the on the area so the idea was just to have a small house one floor house with terraces that can be used for other activities and obviously talking about the north you you, you know that is your south um, here we have the the first view of the seaside so the first view of the seaside it's it's related not only to the um, to the the first floor of the villa, but um, the the best views that you can have is on the terrace. This is the reason why we choose to do this kind of approach. This is related to the sun that is goes around, but we will see later about that, and uh, um, and the ventilation and uh, uh, the system of the wind that we have in this kind of island. Um, this is a part an important part of the concept because we, are ma we, we made villas for uh, people that have to stay just for a few weeks or a few months or years so we can um, rent or sell the villas so the idea was just to have a this, of, this sort of wall that is protecting the interior design of the villa and it's like you know something that you cannot understand from the exterior part but when you are in um, you can uh, discover an entire world. So, as you can see, the entrance is here, like we, like we saw in the first image. So, this is the, the main entrance, is here. And, I'm sorry. So, the idea basically was to have a big um, portion um, in the middle, that is the, um, that is the living part of the, uh, of the house, that is not only related with the entrance, but is related to the garden and swimming pool, and to all the spaces that are in connection with, um, with the rest of the house. So, just, it, it's always related to, to, to the north side that is in this case. So, we, uh, our option was to put the, the bedrooms all in this area and the kitchen in that one. So the idea was basically to have this kind of continuous view at the interior. So you are inside but you are always outside. So this basically was the, was, uh, was, was the first idea that, and we worked a lot on this kind of uh, concept just to be clear that you are in a living room but as, as well you are in a sort of garden in the meantime. So during the summer you can use this, the living room could be uh, 70 square meters but as well 100 square meters and then you have the garden just in front. So it's, it's a sort of a double space. You, and you can see in, 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 in the meanwhile, you are in the kitchen, but as well, you are outside in the garden. So it, it's a sort of, re, literally, of, it, it's a courtyard at the end, but the patios helps the light to, it, it help us to bring the lights in. And what the clients uh, loved about the project was that we uh, respect the landscape, so is that why we talk a lot about the first concept, about the first step, just to say, okay, we don't need a particular roof, we can make um, a plan roof and use it for other uh, possible activities. So we put a garden here, a solarium in this part, that is correctly oriented on the south, um, a swimming pool in the angle, in the south part, and here you can, you can have like a sort of pantry here, just a, a small kitchen to, if you want to eat outside during the night or during the, uh, during the day, it's, it's quite hot, but during, yes. Anyway, so you can see this kind of relation. And uh, the important thing in this image is that all the, the, the concept that we had before, talking about the landscape that is in between the project was just to have a sort of barrier of um, um, green that is in between the two, the, the two villas. So, in the meanwhile, we, we, we are talking not only about a concept that is related to the interior. These, these are images, you can see the, the swimming pool that is 
um, related as well to the kitchen and to the exterior part. It's true that here we work um, not so much with the client because it was a, um, we, yes, it was a competition, so we had um, some indications about the square meters, the approach, but we built our kind of idea um, related to the landscape and what probably they really need um, and they lost in the in the next uh, in in the in the project that we had before. So uh, here you can find some section, but anyway. Um, so you can see this this wall is is a sort of wall that is protecting from the rest of the villas, but as well it's a, 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 it's a passage that you can use just to uh, go around your house and stay protected for the rest of the people that are living next to you. The, the, inter the interesting thing is that all the villas are looking the seaside, so the, 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 um, the image, the other image is completely different for the first one. So here we are completely open to the landscape and we are close to the, to the south part of the um, uh, of the area that is linked to the facility that Lucas uh, explained to you before. Uh, here we work with the typologies, but it's, I mean, it's, it's just a question of square meter. Um, and then this is another imagine, so that's, we finished our presentation, I think. I bring uh, to, back to look at the... Thanks. No, it's just like, um, also like, just to say to the fellows and everyone that also this competition was done after the other one of the Malawi school, so it was like, and before it came here in June, June, July, it was a really tough period. And of course, you need to match all these things. So competition, but then you also have the other work running, construction site, university. So all these things we work like the last week, I think, we from 9 to 3, 4 a.m. every day to finish because also I'm humble but he's not also really tough so super precise in all the things to make everything perfect. Perfection doesn't exist but you can get close and of course when you work with others it's difficult because of course like you see in the renders all this all this plant they hate me because of course we choose every single plant here and here flowers and trees and they were doing the renders and they hate us. When they, of course, they sent the first preview, it was beautiful, but then my, my partner in the office says, this is not the right position for the trees. We need to, it's not big enough, it needs to be here. And I say, okay. I say, okay, Nick, it was 2 a.m., so you need to shift a bit the trees because it's not exactly where it should have been. You know? And you work like this, and then, but then in the end, the project is finished. It can be something else, probably. It can, can change again and again and again in the next phases. But still, that all this work together with many artists it brings to a, a building that I'm sure I couldn't be designed alone, and even uh, Nicolò. Maybe it's something different, maybe it's still beautiful, but not this one. Where we believe the collaborative process is a good answer for the project. As for the one where we are doing now, Okay, if you have any questions, we would be happy to answer. Thanks a lot again.